here's the deal. If you get to the top of the tree, all the fruit from the bottom at the top is going to be there, son. So I don't need you focusing on cars and money and stuff. You're going to get that. I need you to focus on why you were born in the first place. Why are you here on earth for this particular time? What are you doing here? I need to tell you that you owe you something. I don't want nothing. You ain't got to start with the two-parent background. You ain't got to start with wealth. You ain't got to start with your parents graduated. It's not the hand that you dealt. You got rich kids who want drugs. You got rich kids who committed suicide. You got rich kids who, who don't know their purpose in life. It's not the hand that you was dealt, baby. That's how you play your hand. Every opportunity is the last opportunity. Every opportunity, I have to reprove myself again. Every opportunity, I still know. E.T., you've been doing this for years. Why are you so nervous? Because the day you become content, the day you stop evaluating yourself, the day you stop growing, the day you stop getting better, is the day you die. Is the day the person who's trying to catch you will get you. And I ain't where I want to be. And I'm like, God, I ain't where I want to be. And he was like, you stop being a victim. I said, what you mean a victim? Well, it ain't my fault my mom got pregnant or something. It ain't my fault my daddy wasn't there. It ain't my fault they couldn't get along. It ain't my fault. He said, boy, you, you grown. You ain't 10 no more. You, you, the decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you're doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games that you crying about. So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? You've been lazy your whole life, and now somebody told you you can make six figures, and you go knock on the door a hundred times, and your body say you a lie. You ain't never gave a hundred percent. In order to knock on the door a hundred times, you're going to have to get 120. Get up out of here. You can't do this. And you're going to have to fight and fight and fight and fight. And most of you won't be successful, not because you can't do it, but you can't outlast your old you long enough to get to your new new. Every day when I wake up, I got all kind of demands. You got all kind of demands. And the reason why you're not where you want to be is not because you're not great, but you're taking all other people's stuff before you spend enough time with yourself to get to know you and get to know what you want and what you should do. And so please raise your hand with me if you say, E, from this day forward, I make a commitment to myself in a way I've never made a commitment to myself before. Let me see your hands. I said, I'm on grind. I'm going victim. A lot of people are saying, E, I'm scared. What if I do it and I fail? E, I'm scared, E. E, I want to do it. I got I'm gifted. I'm gifted. I'm talented. I know I can write that song. I know I can produce that album. I know I can do that CD. I know I can write a book. I know I can get that degree, but I'm scared. So I'm telling you in life, you start running from a class, you start running from a subject that you don't like, it will haunt you for the rest of your natural life. It ain't going nowhere. But if you go after the fight, if you approach the challenge, you have a much ch better chance of winning. This the fight of your life, baby. Are you hearing me? This the fight of your life. This the fight of your life. And listen to me. If you're going to win the fight of your life, you can't be afraid to fight. All right, some things don't come. They just not gonna come to you because you want it as bad as you want to free. After you want it as bad as you, you gotta put up the dudes, baby. And you gotta be willing to fight that thing out. Are you hearing me? You are not gonna stop me. I'm not listening to that voice. I'm not listening to fear. I'm gonna move my faith. I've come too far to give up now. You got greatness all inside of you. You got greatness all inside of you. But your problem is you a scaredy cat. You saw. And every time it get hard, you quit and you give up. And I'm telling you, if you would be willing to fight your way through it, if you would be willing to fight your way through this battle, fight your way through cancer, 
Fight your way through that academic struggle. Fight your way through the board. Fight your way through it. If you are willing to fight your way through that singing career, fight your way through boxing, fight your way through football. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Fight your way through it. You got to fight the fear because guess what? Fear is bigger than you. There's greatness in you. Are you hearing me? There's greatness in you. And you mean to tell me you're never going to reach your full potential? You mean to tell me you're never going to be what you've been called to be? That you're not going to do what you've been called to do because you are afraid? Listen to me. The boogeyman ain't real. That's why I need you to, I need you to understand that you can have it. For real, you can have it. But it's going to be a fight. And if you're willing to put up the fight, I'm telling you at the end of the fight, it's going to come victory. You got this far. If you was going to quit, you should have quit a long time ago. You've come too far to quit now. You need to get a reward for it. That's why I'm trying to tell you, never stop. Never give up. Never give in. Your boy was a high school dropout. Your boy was homeless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I slept in abandoned buildings, baby. You say, how did you get here, E? Because one day I got up and stopped being a victim, and I was a victor. Are you hearing me? And I took that one class, and that one class turned into two classes, and I got my GED. And then I went to college, and yep, I told you it took 12 years, but what did I do? I never stopped fighting. It got harder, and it got harder, and seeing the further I climbed, the harder it got. But I didn't stop, I didn't quit, I just kept fighting and fighting, and then I got to the masters, and it was harder than the four year, and it was harder than the GED. But what did I do? I got here, not because I'm the strongest, not because I'm the fastest, not because I'm the best, but I kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And your boy got through the masters. Now we at the end of the PhD, baby. Oh, uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Now we got the dissertation. And I ain't no writer, and I ain't no intelligent dude, and I ain't no stopper. Then you say, how you gonna get the PhD? Because I keep fighting. And fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and what I what I will not do is I will not quit. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Lay hold of me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? You should have quit 10 years ago when you got right. You should have quit 10 years ago when he walked out on you. You should have been quick. You don't quit now. It's an Israel. You got two more to go. And when you get to success, it's not about skill. When you get to a certain level of success, it's about stamina. It's about stamina. It's about you won't break me. You can't break me. I fought too long. I fought too hard. If I was going to quit saying, you should have got me a 17 home. You should have told me when I was being out of the trash. It's too late now. I'm in the rich car. It's too late now. Fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. It's too late. I got people's lives out there. It's too late. He should have broke me a long time ago. I'm unbreakable now. One day I made a decision that enough is enough. I'm tired of being average. I'm tired. I'm tired of being good. I'm tired. I want to go to the dealership and buy the best car. I want to move to the nicest neighborhood. I want to fly first class. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Australia. I, want, I made a decision. Enough is enough. It's showtime. Will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Some of you in the room right now, you are where you are. You're giving 60% when you have 120 in you. Why? Because you never made a decision. And those of you in this room, you already there. Your problem is this is stuff you don't want to give up to put on. You're talented. You just don't want to give up sleep. 
Listen to me. Power for power. Any agent in the room. Power for power. Motivational speaker. Power for power. Entrepreneur. Power for power. Athlete. Power for power. Weightlifter. Power for power. Whatever you do, I guarantee you, when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. You love sleep too much. You love that alcohol too much. You love that substance too much. You love that vice too much. There's something that you love more than yourself, than your dream, than your goals. Watch what happens when you have a goal that only has two reasons. See how long that lasts. Watch a goal that has 50 reasons and see how. There's some, somebody called me the other day on the interview, still big like this. E.T., what do you feel like on the days that you don't feel like to ask, ask the question again, please. Well, what do you do on the days that you don't feel like? So I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm way past that every day I feel like. Every day I feel like you do. Every day I feel like giving my wife the best life. Every day I feel like driving in a nice car. Every day I feel like flying first class. Every, every single day of my life, I feel like giving a hundred and fifty. Every single day. Somebody says yesterday, E.T., you gave 120. What you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I don't know. Give 140. I don't know, but I don't have days where I don't feel like it. Why? Because I'm counting on me. My wife's counting on me. I don't have days to waste. No more 50%, no more. No more 70%, no more. I want us an 85 God. I want you at 85 in God. If you're at 80, I want you at 90, and I mean moving rapidly. Not rocket science. And the universe is not responding to you correctly because your body language sucks. Your spirit sucks. It's the feet. I need you to give me that 120. I need you to give me that everything you do. I need you to start giving me that 120 and everything you do. Bring it all, all together. Bring all the energy, all the passion. Bring it all together and dominate. But I got an opportunity to make the dream become a reality. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more plan. If you have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is study. Get off the phone. Sorry, I'm not available until the end of this year. No, I'm for real. You reached the right number, but you called me at the wrong time. Call me back January 1st. I'm about to get busy now. Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sleeping on the street. Stop walking up and down Fico Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to I gotta breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you will never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you, the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. And when I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about hearts. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have hearts. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. A lot of us are more adamant about the ideology of our beliefs than we are about our real beliefs. You feel what I'm saying? Like a lot of us care more about like the, the, the idea of the dream or the idea of our philosophy, but we're not really doing what we, you feel me? But if you think I'm doing it, I feel better about the fact that you think I'm doing this than I'm really doing it behind closed doors. You feel me? So it's almost like this generation, you know, and I'm sure it's not just this generation, I apologize. But in generations, there are people who would prefer to look rich than really be rich. I'm telling you, you need to grow because you still holding on to everything and you don't understand the reason why you're holding on to everything is because of your insecurities. <laughs> you feel me? Like, like, you, you, this is the third year you said you was going to 
do certain things and you haven't done them. And all of us are brilliant. So there's no reason that you that brilliant in three is taking you three years. Matter of fact, it ain't take you three years. You still haven't got it yet. You're still piecemealing it. Why are you piecemealing it? Because you're not dealing with a, a realer issue. Mm. The realer issue is you want control. You're insecure. You feel that by helping other people, it's going to diminish you for some reason. That's mm. not the truth. The truth of the matter is LeBron can go to whatever team he want in the NBA. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is Steph, yes. anybody would take Steph yep. and fight for Steph. Any free, anytime these boys free agents, the market is fighting for these boys. And they spend it $250,000. You know what I'm saying? Baseball, they spend it $450 uh, million. Dollars. I'm sorry. Uh, these boys get millions and millions of dollars. So for me, the first thing I realized was leverage is having something other people need, period. Mm. Don't make it deeper than that. Mm. Like, like it, that. it ain't no deeper than that. It's, you have a product or a service that is needed. Now, I would even say uh, needed by the masses. I was talking to TJ today. You know, he's doing a phenomenal job in terms of he's grown as a speaker. Yeah. So now I can give him opportunities. And he was like, yeah, yeah I had a video that went up 9,000. Uh, I got 9,000 views. I said, do me a favor. This is not 2008 where views mean something. Okay, why am I saying that? Because people could pay for stuff. When we first started doing it, if you had 100,000 people following you, it was really 100,000 people following you. Now, it's the robot, it's the ads. Bro, you can pay to get 9,000 people to see your stuff. So I was like, TJ, that's not what you want. You want to add value. He's like, what does that mean? I was like, just because 9,000 people watched it, it don't mean you added value to 9,000 people. It's just telling you that the number said, I said, here's what I need you to do. I need you to make sure that the football coach is watching that joke and going, mm -hmm. I need to hire you. Mm -hmm. That's totally, that's a different mindset. Yeah. I need your speech to go up there and every football coach in the country go, we can't afford E.T., we can't afford Inky Johnson, we need to get T.J., how much he costs. So that's number one. It is having a, a, a product or a service that's super valuable. I didn't read a book. I didn't get this from a book. I didn't get this from a conference. This is literally from being homeless. This is literally from sleeping in abandoned buildings. This is literally from dropping out of high school and eventually going back to high school and finishing college. Like this is trial and error and everything I'm going to share with you is lived. Nothing read, no, no conferences from the bottom to the top and what I'm hoping to accomplish when I leave, if somebody has not really gotten started with the rest of your life, you're like, E.T., I'm, I'm walking out of here, next level, right? And then there's another group, you kind of got started, but like you're playing with it, like you're not putting forth for 120%, you're not all in. And then for another group, you're doing great, but you're comparing yourself to other people, and I want to push you to be phenomenal, all right? So I'm going to say it again, all right, I'm going to say it again, you got to catch this, that there's one group, and I need you to know who you are. I need you to identify yourself. You're saying, I've got dreams. I have goals. There are things that I want to accomplish. I'm not satisfied. Like, I don't sleep well at night. Like, like E.T. I, I dream at E.T. I want an E.T. I look around at other people who are living a certain way, who, who, who are driving a certain way, who are experiencing a lot. In E.T., I want that. And, and I've robbed myself. I have not been true to myself. I've not done the things I need to do. And there's another group, ET, I got started, but I stop and start. I stop and start. I stop and start. And those two groups specifically, I want to speak to you and help you to get to a different level. So you got to do me a favor, all right? You got to do me a favor. There's somebody in the room. I just need you to think about it for one minute. I want you to think about that thing or those things that you're saying, ET. There's some things that I have to get done. I have to get done the rest of August. I have to get done the rest of September. I have to get done in October. I have to get done in November. I have to get done before December. When the new year comes, there's some things I have to do. So if you're in the room and there's some goals that you've not, you've not uh, accomplished yet, you've not, you've not obtained yet, there's some things that you still need to get done. You, you are at a, a place of desperation and you say, E.T., I have to make this happen, I want you to raise your hand. 
Now let me tell you something. If you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're gonna do, you're gonna get to the next level. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. ET is saying, and it's ET, I'm being honest. The PhD was the only thing. The PhD was the only thing. And so every day, three o'clock in the morning, I spent an hour praying. I spent an hour working out. And then from that point, for about four or five hours, I just wrote, I just wrote, I just wrote, and I just wrote, and I just wrote. And now I'm seeing over a hundred and some pages. I probably got another good hundred to go. And we're finished with this process. So what is it? What is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm going to make my dreams become a reality? Now, if ET can do it, anybody can do it. They looked at the most successful men and women of the world and they found that they had like seven, eight things in common. And one of the things they all had in common was a routine. They are obsessed with their routine. They don't have a gap of wasted time and routine. You know, I realized the reason why I'm so successful and the reason why I don't get in trouble like I used to when I was younger is because when I was younger, man, my schedule had so many gaps in it. The devil had like, okay, he might pray at six, but my man is watching TV. He playing a video game by 8.30. It's not that I'm sweeter than nobody. The devil can't get to me because all my time is taken up. And by the time he get to me, I'm asleep. I'm too asleep to talk to the sin. I'm just being real. 8.30, he's like, hey, you should have. Like, bro, I'm tired. I can't. Come back to me tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, tip me tomorrow, bro. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm good. Look, my body said, all you got to do is put your shoes on. That's the hardest thing you got to do. Just put your shoes on and I'll do the rest. I can't put your shoes on for you, but put your shoes on and then just go. And I just went and I, I was walking for the, I did the uh, 11 incline board and I was just walking for an hour and I was just like, you know what, it's almost an hour. I don't feel like running. My body was like, don't worry about it. We'll get to that when we get to it. I did my hour, about to get off. My body was like, you know, we run now. I said, what? We run now. Let's go. You ain't tired. I said, I am tired. No, you're not. You just walked for an hour. You're not tired, Eric. The brain is telling you some dumb stuff. If you were tired, you wouldn't be able to walk for an hour. Okay, so let's do this. Just run for two minutes. I'm trying to help somebody right now go to a whole other level. The, Bible, the, the reason why you go back to sleep is because you've always gone back to sleep. It's like the defaults. You, you go back to sleep because you're, all you got to do is stop going to sleep and then you're going to stop going to sleep. All you got to do is stop fussing and cussing and then you're going to stop fussing and cussing. All you got to do is stop spending all the money you got and start saving it. Listen to me. I became number one in the world. I became a millionaire not because I made more money. I became a millionaire because they told me millionaires only live off of 30% of their income. I want to make it plain for you. I became a millionaire because I did what millionaires did. I stopped living off a hundred percent. I paid my tithe, and then I was like, all right, E, you only got 20% left. Put the rest up. So the first thing I did, listen to me, the very first thing I did to become rich, somebody said, E, to be rich, put six months of your earnings to the side. So I was like, all right, man, that's what the rich told me to do. So I put six months to the side. How long did it take? I don't remember, but I put it to the side. Then somebody was like, yo, E, you need to put 100000 to the side. I was like, all right, 100000 Did he go put 100000 to the side? Then somebody was like, yo, you need to get your credit score up to 800 I was like, all right, then get my credit score up to 800 Then somebody said, E.T., if you want to be Tony Robbins, there's no way you'll be able to be like those dudes who will have the language they had. You need to go get your master's and a PhD from a white institution. I said, what? I went to Oakwood. I went to HBCU. He was like, yeah, but you didn't learn the language of Zig Ziglar at Oakwood. So Oakwood is a phenomenal place. Oh, y'all not hear what I'm saying. I just said something, you missed it. Now I need to go to Michigan State University. CJ, where's my, you see my master's degree anywhere? How about my PhD? Not in the office, not at church. You ain't seen it in my house. I didn't go to Michigan State to get a PhD. I went to Michigan State to learn the, the majority language. Listen to me very closely. When you graduate and you get a job, if you want to get paid, you never say no. You never 
say it can't get done. Don't you ever say out your mouth it can't get done. Even if you feel in your heart it can't get done, you don't say it out loud. You let the phone call say that. You let the phone say fine first say that. You always say it can get done. Even if you don't think it can get done, just say it and try to make up something. Last time I put on a dress shirt and button up, I just feel, and I hear people say all the time, man, you look like you dressed to success. I'm like, is putting on a shirt and a tie dressed for success? I dressed for success. I'm getting paid. I'm dressed for success. I'm not dressed like he dressed, but I'm dressed the way I feel comfortable. I feel good being me. I feel good not to have to like, not, not only can I say no, I don't have to explain why I'm fatty no more. It feels good being me. Cause guess what? I can never be sweet being you. The majority of you are poor because you read poor stuff. You watch poor stuff. Bro, you just scrolling through like you ain't got a life. Bro, some of y'all on Instagram, you're on there for 30 minutes. If I ask you what you saw, you ain't know. You just scrolling through. Rich people don't waste time. They realize it's their most important commodity. They don't watch a lot of TV, they don't do a lot of entertainment. If they're not working, they're studying their craft and getting better at their craft. So I need you to stop having the positive mindset. So when I quit my job to be an entrepreneur, my mom was like, whoa, what are you doing? I was like, I'm quit. My mom was like, don't you dare quit. You're gonna embarrass me, you got a wife and kids. Does YouTube have insurance? Does YouTube have a 401k? And I was like, yo, mom, I ain't trying to be funny and I ain't trying to be disrespectful, I love you. But you can't teach me how to be a millionaire because you're not. You come from the working class, and I'm not mad at you, huh? We wouldn't be where we are without you. But you told me that every generation is supposed to get better. So I'll take your values, but I'm going to take your work ethic. Because rich people don't work, they think. Poor people go, clock in, I make this much an hour. Rich people go, I put them to work, and I make this much at all. See, what happens is you're working for you and your family, one, they got 40 of you working at one time. So they're giving you 20%, and then they're keeping the 80% off of 15,000 people. So what you have to decide is, are you going to keep being the 99% or are you ready to be part of the 1%? The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. And I think psychologically, the advantage that that, that gives me over, over a lot of people that I, I have been in competition with in different situations is it's difficult to take the first step when you look how big. The task is never huge to me. It's always one brick. I, I believe... Uh, and I learned very young that you, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I want to be, build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's going to be laid better than this brick that I'm going to lay in this next 10 minutes. And you do that every single day. And you have a wall. I've, I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous, sickening work ethic. You know, while the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, I'm working. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I always knew that I could work hard enough. I didn't, I, there, there wasn't an issue with discipline or there wasn't an issue uh, with, with the ability to sacrifice or the willingness to sacrifice. There's no easy way around it. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't study, if you don't work uh, really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day. Mm -hmm. One year, my father had his shop. He decided for whatever reason that he wanted a new wall on 
the front of his shop. So he tore down probably about 16 feet high and probably about uh, 30 feet long. We just completed the wall down. And my brother and I had to dig a six foot hole. We were mixing the concrete by a year and a half. We were building this wall for a year and a half. Every day after school, we were coming to mix some concrete, putting it in the hole, doing it. And it was just myself and my little brother. And I remember standing back, looking at that wall, saying, there's going to be a hole here forever. A year and a half later, we laid the, the final brick. And my father stood back with my brother and I, and I know he planned it. He says he, he, says he did. And the secret to life is effective management of time and chance. And here's what my message is about tonight. The principal key to management of time and change plan. You cannot control time nor change but you can plan the way you use them. Successful people are simply people who effectively planned how they use time. Someone said, if you aim at nothing, you will never miss. Planning creates bullseyes. It creates destinies. It creates targets. Without a plan, you are just shooting in the wind. Don't allow another year be a year of just shooting in the wind. Planning is the most important principle of success in life because the only thing that regulates and change is plan. Oh, I'm a planner. You see, without a plan, time and change will ruin. If you don't plan on what you're going to do, somebody will plan it. The most dangerous person in the Bahamas is a guy named Les. You all know this guy? Dangerous, eh? Let's go this. Let's go do that. Let's go here. Come go with me. Let's go here. Let's go drink this. Let's, let's, let's will kill you. The only defense against less is a plan. When less said, let's go, tell him, mm -mm, I got a plan already. Go into the new year with a plan that is so strong that time will submit to it and change will become its servant. I put it to you then that next year, I want you to remember what you're about to write. God says is the year of changes in time. The number 13, I did some research for you. Do you know that every single letter in Hebrew is a number? Write that down, you know that. So when God spoke to Moses and Joshua and Daniel and, and Joseph, he was speaking in numbers. The Hebrew language is the only language that comes in numbers. Some of you wonder why we use the term 666 for the beast. Well, the word beast in Hebrew is three letters and they actually are all sick in number. That's the word beast. So when the Bible says the beast shall appear and shall subjugate the earth and shall contaminate the temple, the word beast is 666. It's a number. But do you know what 13 is in Hebrew? It is the word change. Welcome to the year. And I could understand, I could understand that it really was because I was grounded. I've, I've done the, was doing and continue to this day to do the consciousness work. I work at staying awake. And being awakened is just another word for spirituality, but spirituality throws people off and they think you mean religion. When I was hiring people for my company, for own, uh, for looking for presidents, uh, when people would come in, I'd say, tell me, what is your spiritual practice? And literally, would throw, people would go, oh, well, the preacher, I, well, I'm not religious. Or I said, I didn't ask you about your religion. I asked you, what's your spiritual practice? What do you do to take care of yourself? What do you do to keep yourself centered? What do you do to the, and uh, you know, one woman started crying. You know. so, so to answer your question, yeah. everything is fueled that comes from me really wanting to be a better person on earth. And this is what I know to be true. The reason why the show worked is because I understood that that audience, my viewers, the people who watched us every day and would come and just like you all did, uh, get tickets and they would come with their family. You all just came across campus, but that's good too. People would come from all over the world just to be there with their aunts and their mothers and they'd come with their cousins and there'd be a few men in there going, what? The or <laughs> saying, well, I went to Oprah with you. I had such regard for that. And I just had a conversation with John Mackey who runs Whole Foods yeah. and has written this fabulous book. You should get it called um, Conscious Capital. And he was talking about how the investment in the stakeholders, the people who you are serving, that connection between the people who you're trying to serve and sell to is equally as important as the people who you're buying from, equally as important as the people who are you know, supporting you financially. Um, 
as your stockholders if you are, you know, you know, a public company. So I always understood that there really was no difference between me and the audience. At times I might have had better shoes, but at the core, the core of, of, of what really matters, that we are the same. And you know how I know that? Because all of us are seeking the same thing. You're here at this fabulous school and we'll go out into the world and each pursue based upon what you believe your talents are, what your skills are, maybe your gifts are, but you're seeking the same thing. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself. Every reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. I truly love you all. That's why I do what I do. No other reason. No other reason in the world. So that's what you all should do, folks. That is a real key to surviving the mess that we're in. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Cultivate a genuine love for life. Be, you know, be genuinely grateful and thankful to the infinite creator every day for bringing you into being. I mean, come on, folks, look around you. It's a, it's a pretty incredible world we have here. And life is just amazing, don't you think? I mean, especially when one considers the alternative. I mean, this is, uh, this is a lot better than that. Be thankful for the world. Be thankful for this world. I mean, we've survived this far, haven't we? And haven't you? You've survived this far. You may not have everything you want, but really you've got everything you need in order to complete that which you came here to do. Give thanks for that. You've got to go into this battle with love in your heart. But I think meditation is important. Meditation is good for inner strength. It's good for knowing who and what you are, discovering that, figuring out how to work with your own emotions and how to work with your own energies and how to work with your own powers. Because we're all incredibly powerful folks. We all have these incredible energetic connections if we can just be aware of them. But I still believe in the human spirit. I still believe in the human race. I still believe that there's a peaceful way through this because I believe that once people remember who and what they are, they'll just see how easy it would be to change things. So that's always been the focus. Don't allow yourself to believe anything. If you're going to believe in anything, believe in your own sovereignty, believe in your own freedom, believe in your own power to make change, your own power to have the idea that could change the world. No matter what your status in society, you know, no matter whether you're rich or poor or, or, or physically abled or not, you could still have the idea that could change the world because everything that we see here is all based on ideas. It's just an idea. But anyway, folks, the journey goes on. It's an interesting journey and it seems to have a great many twists and turns and who knows where it's going to go next. One hell of a ride, that's for sure. And when we uh, break out of these belief systems, which are often related to insecurity because it's like uh, you want to belong to a group because you feel more secure or you want to have a belief system because oh no I, I found out what i believe now and i can leave that alone and get on with my life and all that stuff um yeah but when, when the people used to come around my house as a kid and and um, used, used to say to me mother what religion are you she thought we're christian no we weren't <laughs> no we weren't but it was something that, oh yeah, I'll be, I'll be a Christian because then I've got to be something. Well, we haven't. We can be all that is, has been, and ever will be. We don't have to be a Christian. We don't have to be a Muslim. We don't have to be a Jew. We don't have to be a Hindu or any of the bloody um, uh, uh, prisons of the mind. We can be all that is. And it's a, it's a thing, the thing that I, I, I say sometimes, if people can tell me what they believe, if they can give a name to what they believe, they're in a prison. Because we just are, everything just is. It's not just, I think, therefore I am, computer level, or I compute, therefore I am. It's I am, therefore I am. That's the real level of being. I am all that is, has been, and ever will be. I do not need to put a name to what I believe, because I just am. I am the force with no name and all names. I am all things and I'm no things. I'm everything and nothing. I'm everywhere and nowhere because I am all that is, therefore I'm all possibility. And when we do that, these neurons, pathways and networks stop firing off in relation to the rigid belief system and filtering reality. 
for us. So now we can open to all possibility instead of being uh, uh, stuck with one or two possibilities called belief systems which hold us in servitude and limitation for entire lives in these vibrational boxes that therefore come from these belief systems. We can be honest with ourselves as we break out of these belief systems. Crucial. Cognitive dissonance is not a bad thing. It's the way it's used that puts us in a state of enslavement because of it. If we are honest with ourselves, people that have belief systems of various kinds, who say, when I come into contact with experience or information that challenges my belief system, I'm not going to hold on till my knuckles turn white. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to look at this, and if it makes sense, I'm going to change the way I see the world. Cognitive dissonance, then, is a positive thing, and we move on. You know, people get embarrassed because they believe something, and they suddenly realize that it's actually a nonsense. But they shouldn't get embarrassed, because we live in a world where from cradle to grave, we are pummeled with um, manipulation to believe things uh, and take on belief systems that allow the few to control the many. Instead of being embarrassed when we suss it, we should be celebrating that we've sussed it because we're no longer in servitude. And we can break out of these schizophrenias where, according to Doublethink and Orwell, we take on these um, uh, contradictory views like war is peace and all the rest of it. Again, honesty and say, hold on, that doesn't make sense. Because go back to consciousness. Does consciousness do war? No, consciousness does uh, peace in its, in its uh, pure state. Therefore, anything that is being justified for war and slaughter and pain and suffering is by definition unsupportable. Un, um, so instead of saying, well, I'm going to, we have a war and I'm, I'm going to explain it away because I'm fighting for peace. Rubbish. War, end of story. No, unjustifiable. And therefore, I'm not going to justify it under any means. Then the schizophrenia start to fall. We're not justifying the unjustifiable anymore. We're saying it's not justified, no longer has my support. And now the schizophrenia is breaking because we're no longer supporting two contradictory things. We're taking a point of view of consciousness, peace, love, caring, empathy, compassion. And anything that is a contradictory to that, we're not interested in. The schizophrenia starts to break up. And all these things are breaking down these... these uh, uh, it's like a web that we're caught in, the strands pulled off as we start to break down the contradictions of being honest with ourselves in terms of our belief system. And we move from consciousness or to consciousness from mind. Now, if you have a negative thought or an unhappy thought or a self-depreciating thought, you turn on a different set of circuits and a different combination, a different sequence and a different pattern that produces a different level of mind. And the brain then begins to make a different batch of chemicals that signals the body for you to begin to feel exactly the way you were just thinking, negative or unhappy or unworthy. So the moment you begin to feel the way you think, because the brain is in constant communication with your body, you begin to think the way you feel, which makes more chemicals for you to feel the way you think. And then you think the way you feel, and then you feel the way you think, and then you think the way you feel. And some people do this for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Now, the redundancy of that cycle over time creates what I call a state of being. And a state of being is when your mind and body are working together or your thoughts are, and feelings are aligned to a concept. So thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And as people get caught in this cycle of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking, over time, they condition their body to memorize that emotion as well as the conscious mind. And whenever the body knows as well as the mind, that's called a habit. A habit is when your body is the mind. Now, 95% of who you are by the time you're 35 years old is a set of memorized behaviors set of emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that run just like a computer program. 
So 5% of your conscious mind begins to work against 95% of what you've memorized. So the person wants to think positively, but they're feeling negatively. They want to create their dream board, you know, and put up their future life, but they feel unworthy. That's mind and body in opposition.